The reverse sugar tongue splint is the ideal application for collars and forearm fractures. To start, measure from behind the elbow, coming up both sides of the arm to the highest tip of the fingers. Then, cut the desired length of the splint. The overlapping part of the splint provides elbow protection. You can open the pad completely. If you use a bucket of water or faucet for water activation, you do not need to open it. Fold the splint in half and round the edges. Cut slightly diagonal across the splint and round the edges as well. Place both parts inside the padding and make sure the two cut ends form a triangle gap in the middle of the splint. Then close the padding again. Cut the padding in the middle, following the triangle shape of the substrate gap and leaving a margin of padding on either side. Do not cut the padding completely. Leave one finger width of padding intact at the triangle tip. Activate splint with water. Afterwards, place the splint on the patient's arm by sliding the cut section over the fingers with the attached section in the web space between the thumb and the forefinger. Align the splint with the medial and lateral sides of the arm. Wrap with a bandage to secure the splint. Begin at the wrist and go through the web space. For a better immobilization, repeat this step again. Proceed down the arm with overlapping 50% of the bandage. Secure the first bandage and start with the second bandage over the end of the first one. Now, you position the patient's elbow at 90 degrees. Fold one side of the excess material under the elbow and secure with a bandage. Next, fold the other side of the splint also under the elbow and continue wrapping the bandage around the elbow. At the end, fixate the bandage with tape or a hook and loop fastener. Mold with your palm of hand inside the palm of the patient's hand and hold your other hand against the patient's hand. Position until the splint is in a rigid position. Mold as prescribed by the physician.